Hi, my name is Rochelle Smith, certified personal fitness trainer, professional speaker, and author. Last time, I highlighted the importance of identifying appropriate members for your gym by creating profiles, by also determining what does an ideal member look like? What type of members would we like to have in our facility? What can we do to target folks like that? So identifying your ideal members is so important for your marketing efforts. And this time, I actually want to conclude this introductory series on marketing by highlighting the importance of pricing. Now, I could have saved this for down the road, and I initially that was my plan, but what I've decided to do is actually kind of put it in here in this earlier series because it's so, so, so important, and I think it can be do or die for a lot of facilities in terms of their business strategy and then what facilities are doing in terms of revenue generation, profitability, insolvency, and things like that. But what I want to do in this particular episode is we, we think about pricing is I want to kind of shift your mindset a little bit. And that is on focus, focus on creating value. All right, so you can either, there's two different approaches you can take when it comes to pricing at your particular facility. So you can focus on value, creating value for your members, and they will be willing to pay for that, I promise you. Or you can focus on price which is a very, very tough road. And it's very tough one, once you kind of go down that path of discount pricing and low price, it's very, very tough because people can come and undercut you and underprice you. and It's just a very, very tough road. And you're gonna need so many more members than a facility who perhaps is charging an additional 10, 20, $30 a month. So want to think about it in those two realms, value or kind of pricing. It's like value or discount. So there's two different ways you can go. Examples of that would be kind of the discount route would be your Planet Fitness, which is part of their strategy and it's worked well for them, but also your to kind of the antithesis to that from the kind of more value proposition focus would be your Lifetime Fitness. Two diametrically opposed strategies, but two effective strategies for both of those entities. And of course, we know Lifetime Fitness is corporate, so they've got their just their strategy is a whole just incredibly different strategy, and it's kind of built their strategy is kind of built around that and pricing is built into that kind of premium pricing and luxury kind of premium image, and so whereas your Planet Fitness has more of the discount pricing, and so when you think about when I challenged you to think about creating value, that is something there's so much you can't control in the fitness world. I've told you that a million times it seems like already, but that's because it's so true. You could focus on creating value, and that is in terms of your course, your class offerings, in terms of your training staff. How good are they? Are they competent? Are you generating results? Okay, some of those features we talked about, but it's important that you translate those into benefits. Those are all different ways. You know, convenience. Are you open 24 hours a day? Are you, are you staffed? Are you not staffed? I mean, there's so many different ways that, that you can really kind of Put a puzzle together in terms of your value tro value proposition specific to your facility that will really help you in terms of because because it's initial step once you're able to kind of create the value then the second obvious step from that is to be able to charge for that value because i tell you emphatically you may be nervous you may be thinking about is your pricing and i feel like i got to be really low because other people will leave whatever this and that but I tell you emphatically, those facilities that, that are charging double what you're charging, triple what you're charging, sometimes even quadruple, five, six times what you're charging, that is because they are focused on creating value for their members. And members will pay for that. Okay, you think about concepts such as CrossFit. Okay, and that's that's well over 100 bucks a month, can pull up to about $150 a month. Okay, depending kind of on your location and proximity. I mean, you've got Soul Cycle, which is running about 34, 35 bucks per class. All right, you've got your, your Orange Theory Fitness, another awesome concept, group fitness concept. Okay, that, that's, that's charging a, a, a very large amount of money for their classes as well. Because, but why is that? And why are those entities successful despite having high prices? Because that is because the value proposition is high enough where people are willing to pay for that. Okay, I can give you an example of the Orange Theory Fitness opened here in Novi, which is kind of the suburbs south of mine, you know, two, three, maybe three, four months ago. And within the first week, they have people clamoring for classes, filling up like that. Okay, because again, that value proposition, that group fitness training model, where their trainers have to audition and really kind of prove themselves to even 
have trainer roles in, in, in those Orange Theory Fitness facilities. So their value proposition, and that's true in, in, in many of these cases, and actually in all of these cases, where facilities are charging far above the norm or far above the standard, that is because their value proposition is high enough. And they've, they've, they've done their research, they've done their homework, and even kind of your, your smaller private facilities who are able to charge more because that is, they, they've really kind of justified their value, they've created that value, and they're able to subsequently charge for that value. Because pricing can truly make or break, not just even a fitness facility, but any type of entity. How you price yourself is so, so, so important. Because if, if you kind of go in and lowball and have the lower price and the discount price, then you're going to need far more members than you would otherwise in order to break even, in order to be solvent, in order to turn a profit. And so that is something you really, really need to think about. And we think about the whole kind of discount, the discounting strategy. Now that was kind of built into the platform of Planet Fitness. It's worked well for them. And as I alluded to in the last episode, you know, no longer do they have just the two tier, that $10 a month in your local club, and then the black card for like 20 bucks a month where you can go to different clubs across the country. They've actually now got a third tier, which is at $15 a month. And so they've got three different tiers, and that's, of course, another way for them to generate income and revenue. But it's worked well for them. But I can tell you, just not just even with that particular entity or those kind of discount fitness entities, where like your Fitness 21, your Stat Fitness kind of fall into that, the volume that you need, the volume of members that you need is going to be far greater than, than say, a Lifetime Fitness or anytime fitness places like that so you've got to think about your pricing and, and, and how hard is it going to be to to get more members depending on kind of what your revenue goals and what your break-even point your profitability point is it's going to take a lot in order for you to, to get members to join your gym because again according to the International Health Racquetball and Sports Club Association there's about 17,000 fitness facilities in this country so there's no shortage <laughs> people have a lot of options and so if you focus on creating that value as opposed to just kind of competing on price, it's that, that price is, is really, really, really going to be a challenge. And, and speaking of price, and I really want to focus kind of on this, this pricing concept in terms of promotion. All right. And Groupon. I notice a lot of you got trainers on Groupon. you got facilities on Groupon. Groupon is wonderful. I love Groupon. I've gotten many Groupons myself and used them. Absolutely love it. Great restaurants. Wonderful concept, wonderful Chicago-based company. and But I want you to think about, from a pricing standpoint, keep in mind, entities like Groupon, that those are sales promotion tactics. All right, so keep in mind that Groupon needs to be a short-term tactic, not a long-term strategy. And that's where not even just fitness facilities, restaurants, and all types of folks have gotten themselves in trouble. And you can always tell those people who are constantly advertising on Groupon. They may have started out with one campaign and two years later, they're still running Groupons every day. Because once you go down that, that discount pricing path, folks, it is tough. All right, I started my career out at General Mills. And, and I will emphatically tell you, and nothing I'm saying is proprietary or confidential. Okay, you see those Betty Crocker coupons constantly in your newspapers, what are called FSIs or freestanding inserts, Cheerios. All of those different brands that you see, and those are General Mills brands, but there's several different companies do that. But once you go down that path of couponing and discounting and reducing your rates and reducing your prices, you better get ready to continue. You know, And that's going to be something that will be incredibly tough to walk away from because once you train customers that you are a discount facility or discount brand or discount product or discount service, it is very tough to all of a sudden then go in the opposite direction and try to establish yourself is worthy of value in a higher price. So keep that in mind with your Groupons. Yes, if you're looking, if you've got a brand new facility and you're opening up, you wanna get some new members, you wanna generate awareness, you wanna stimulate trial in terms of people coming in to your facility and giving it a try, absolutely do that. Okay, if you wanna cyclically, cyclically use Groupon to perhaps kind of capture the New Year's resolution folks that, that are starting out at the beginning of the year, or if you've got promotions where you're, you're in a northern, a, a northern state in the US, and we know how important summer is and people want to get ready for summer after a long winter. You want to capitalize perhaps in April or May or March, April and May to do some Groupon, to do some special promotions, even in your facility, reduce your price, give a half price, whatever the promotion may be. Do it cyclically. Do not do it constantly because when you do that, folks, you are training people that your facility is not worth paying full price for. And as I mentioned, 
the volume of people that you will need. Okay, when you think about your Anytime Fitness, okay, they're, they're coming in right about anywhere between about 30, 35, 40, 45 a month is, is typically their, their general rough average. Okay, and so when you compare that to maybe Planet Fitness charging $10 a month, okay, how many more members, <laughs> think about that. How many more members you're going to need at that discount price versus your Anytime Fitness? And of course, we know they're the number one ranked global franchise, according to Entrepreneur Magazine for 2015. Okay, your Lifetime Fitness, roughly 77 bucks a month. Okay, so you're going to need versus that $10 a month. How many more members is Planet Fitness? Just as an example, again, they're a wonderful business, wonderful strategy, wonderful company, but they're going to need a whole lot more members than your, than your, your, your Lifetime Fitness. All right, so just think about that. Your pricing is so, so, so important. And again, it ties into your branding. It ties into your image. Do you want to be known as the facility and the brand and as the franchise that is constantly discounting? Okay, because you're basically saying our services, our product, our trainers are not worth full price. They're not worth really paying for us. So we're constantly going to discount. That is sending a strong message. That is a sending a strong negative message. And yes, we all love discounts. We all love to get a break on price. But do not do that continuously. Do not do that constantly because you will train yourself. And even as I mentioned, I've, I've, I've been a member of Planet Fitness. I have great respect for Planet Fitness. But I know you just even mentally, you can kind of ask yourself, so when's the next ad going to come out? When's the next promotion going to start? When am I going to get the next mailer saying that it's $1 down or $5 down or $10 down? Okay, because I'm trained to think that way. I mean, and we all receive those type of ads in various industries from various businesses. So just keep in mind that is no different from your facility. Think about the image you want to create. Create value. Make it worth people's time. Make it worth people's effort. Make it worth people's money. And as your CrossFits, as your soul cycles, there's many, many different examples I could give you. Orange Theory Fitness, they are charging a lot more because they've got the value proposition to justify that. And that's why they're doing well and doing so successful. So I thank you so much for your time during this marketing series, and I look forward to continuing this conversation in future episodes. Make it a wonderfully fit day.